I've got two sermons I'm going to preach 10 minutes apiece. How many of y'all believe me? Nobody believes me. The first one we're going to do with the song, okay? Let me just fix this real quick. All right, you ready? Joy to the world. Put it up there. Y'all going to sing. Ready? Joy to the world. Let every heart prepare. Stop, stop, stop. First point in my sermon. Let every heart prepare him room. This was not always my favorite Christmas carol. As a matter of fact, this was one of my least favorite Christmas carols because that was kind of corny. Right? Joy, joy. Right? And then this year... As I actually looked at the words and looked at the lyrics and sang them, it's like I sang it for the first time. Let every heart prepare him room. That's a good word right there, amen? Let every heart prepare him room. And that is my goal through this Christmas season is to take time away from the hustle and bustle of life and to stop for a few days and open up my heart, open up my spirit, open up my soul and prepare a place for him. Amen? Amen? So I want to challenge you. Let every heart prepare him room. That is the best thing we can do. Go to verse 2. Verse 2. Let's do it again. One more, one more slide for me. He rules the world with The glories of his righteousness. Okay, stop. I think we went to verse 3. Hang on. Let's go back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2, if you will. Joy to the earth. You don't need the keyboard again? I just like doing that. You don't really need it, do you? Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men, wild fields and floods, rock hills and plains, repeat the, stop, repeat the sounding joy. Many of us have got to take this season after we have prepared him room, but every heart prepare him room and say what he says in the prepared place. Many of us spend our time repeating our emotions, our displeasures, our discomforts, our dislikes. We speak from the flesh. We notice what it says. In an age where everybody wants to have an original Facebook post, in an age when everybody wants to be heard and have an original Facebook post, it says repeat. To repeat something is mean you've given up your right to originality. That Rather, you are only the one who is echoing another voice. And what we need this Christmas is a group of people who put themselves in repeat mode. Who from that place of the prepared heart only say what has been said by the Father. Repeat the sounding joy. And this is what I know is on his heart this Christmas. Joy. This Christmas, joy is in his heart. And if there's something coming out of you other than joy, it's because you're repeating what's in your heart rather than the place that you have prepared for him. That's a good word. Somebody say amen. So as we repeat the sounding joy, I want to be an echo of his voice. I want to say what heaven is saying and not what earth is saying. Amen? So as you gather around your tables at Christmas and you start talking about politics and <laughs> start talking about how good the Razorbacks are. At the end of the day, let the number one theme from your heart be the repeating of what you've heard from him in that place where you have prepared for him. All right, verse 3. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the 
the glories of his righteousness. And stop. And the wonders of his love. When I make a place for him, when I prepare him room, and I say what's on his heart, I will experience and be also be a conduit of the wonders of his love. When I am repeating the sounding joy from his heart, I am experiencing the wonders of his love, but I'm also the conduit which, by which the love of the Father flows through me to other people. Somebody say amen. The wonders of his love. So my first sermon was very short and very simply this. Prepare him room. Repeat the sounding joy and be the conduit for his wonderful love. Somebody say amen. Amen. Good. All right, now to the next sermon. See, I told you I could do it. And I, t- I kept t- count. I only touched my ear one time in that sermon right there. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 9. How many are happy this morning? Second sermon, clock starts now. <laughs> That's funny, because I'm going to go long anyway. The people, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah is prophesying 700 years before Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. What did John say in chapter 1? In the beginning was the And that word was the light, right? You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. Somebody say joy. Joy Joy to the world. They rejoice before you according to the joy of the harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of the burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor as in the days of Midian. Verse 5. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning in the fuel of fire. In verse 6, for unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful. His name will be called Counselor. His name will be called Mighty God. And his name will be called Everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. I'm just reading the Bible this morning. Of the increase of his government, that government of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of his David and over his kingdom to order it, establish it with judgment and justice from the time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. 7,000 years before, 700 years before Jesus is born, Isaiah is prophesying this. Fast forward to Luke chapter 2. That unto us a child is born. Joseph... This is the traditional Christmas story. Y'all know this very well. Joseph went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were complete for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes. Let me just stop right here and preach a sermon to you. (laughs) We're going to stop being spiritual for about 30 seconds. i got to preach a sermon right now about Christmas. For everybody in the house who believes that gift bags are okay and acceptable during Christmas, Jesus, the greatest gift of all, was not put in a gift bag, but he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Somebody say amen. Stand, stand up, sister. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up. She told me before service because she know she said she wrapped seventy five presents, right? Seventy five presents. Give her a hand, amen. That was funny. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, "Gift bags are from hell." <laughs> okay, let, amen. <laughs> I'm joking, not really, but anyway. She gave birth and she wrapped him in clothes, the greatest gift of all, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. I'm telling you, when he comes, he brings joy. When he comes, he brings joy, which will be for all the people. Verse 11, for today in the city of David, I love this, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Every one of us can read that personally this morning. Every one of us can step outside the corporate setting and take our Bible and say, unto me a Savior was born. Amen? That's how personal and intimate that this birth was for all of us. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Verse 15. Or go on to the next section of scripture, please. Verse 22. When the days for the purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Verse 23, as it is written in the law, for every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what has said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Do I need to get Mark up here and sing you a song? How many of y'all saw that on Facebook or was here? Yeah. Somebody this morning, I met them for the first time, and they, they had watched it online, and they said, you were so funny on stage. And I said, no, 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 you got the wrong guy. That's Mark, right? If I'd have jumped on that dude's back weighing, you know, a buck 95, that's a lie, by the way. <laughs> I'd have hurt somebody. Anyway, so there he was in the man in Jerusalem. His name was Simon or Simeon. And this is what I want to get to. Isaiah prophesies unto you a child is born 900 years or 700 years before the birth of Jesus. There's this man in Jerusalem, his name was Simeon, and the man was righteous and devout looking for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Verse 26, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that, they, that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit in the temple and when his parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, they took him into his arms, Simeon did, and they blessed God and said, verse verse 29, the Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. He sees this child, this Jesus, which God had promised him that he would not die before he saw the Christ. And when he sees him, because he's in the spirit, his spirit man leaps and he grabs this child and he says, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your verse. Verse 30, for my eyes have seen your salvation. As we celebrate Christmas, as we celebrate the coming of Jesus. I notice I didn't say the birth of Jesus. I'm saying the coming of Jesus. I'm, uh, one of my pet peeves is whenever people say something like this. They'll say something like, well, he's not a baby anymore. Well, of course he's not a baby. When I celebrate your 35th birthday, I don't go, well, you're not a baby anymore, right? It wasn't the fact that he was a baby. It was the fact that he came. It was the coming of Christ. It was the fact that Emmanuel chose to be God with us. Somebody say Amen. For my eyes have seen your salvation, verse 31, which you have prepared in the presence of all people. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Okay, next verse. Next set of scriptures. Verse 36. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, listen to this, and had lived with her husband seven years after marriage. Verse 37. And a widow to the age of 84. Now, I did some research, and you want to guess what the average life expectancy of someone living in the time of Jesus was? 30 to 35 years. And this woman is 84 years old. This would be like 
going, you know, to, to, to see grandma, and she's 110 or 120 years old, right? She is old. This lady is not just elderly. She has way past elderly. She is bona fide old, right? When the life expectancy is 30, 35 years. And here she is daily. Her practice is to go to the temple. Her practice is to go to the temple, and she's looking for one thing. That one thing that had been prophesied 700 years ago. She, the Bible says she never left the temple serving night and day with fasting and with prayer. In verse 38, at that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Why? Because she had seen what she had lived her entire life to see. This is my second Christmas sermon. I believe we're approaching a year we, we will see what we've all lived to see for so long. In our family, in our church, in our spirit's desire, I believe that many people in this room, you've hungered for something for many years, spiritually speaking, the most. And you've longed for something. And I feel the Lord saying, I'm bringing joy and that promise that you've been waiting for is going to be manifest. Amen? Amen? God, the old adage says, God is never late. He's always on time. Can you imagine a 700-year prophecy coming to life right before your eyes? And can you imagine what it's going to feel like when you can, whenever you can say that everything that you prayed for and everything that you've longed for and everything that you came to the house of God and, and all the hard work, when you can say, I'm starting to see what I've put my time and effort into. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. This is a year when we will see the coming of our promises. Jesus was no doubt a promise to a nation. He was a promise to a nation, and they were glad when they saw the promise to a nation fulfilled. These people who were in the spirit and praying and in the, on the Lord's day. We're going to see some promises fulfilled this year. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, I want the guys. I'm done. Isn't that a miracle? That's a miracle. <laughs> 1049, I'm telling you, miracles still happen. I want you to uh, prepare the communion, real quickly, while they're preparing that, I'm going to do something. We have people who can't get out of the house and can't come to church, and we're live streaming, or maybe somebody's uh, out of town visiting family, and I'm going to uh, administer communion to our people online first, so y'all just watch and pay attention, okay? And then after that, I'm going to call every family up. We'll have four stations, and every I want everybody in the same, go ahead, guys, everybody in the same family to come up together and we're going to serve you communion and then we're going to bless you and then as soon as that is done you're able to leave now mama if you have a baby in the nursery and you want them to be a part of this right now is a good time to slip out and go bring them back into the sanctuary but as soon as we're done with communion you can leave okay so don't shout too loud now you just watch is there a camera? Which, which camera is hot? Wave at me, cameraman. All right. Good deal. If you're at home this morning on Christmas and you're not able to uh, be here this morning, I want to say Merry Christmas to you. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for live streaming. Maybe you don't have the emblems in your hand, but we want to celebrate the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ with you in the sacrament of communion. So I want you to agree with me by faith, because this is done in faith. I want you to agree with me by faith this morning for your healing and for your blessing. I want you to repeat after me. If you're online, I've got this bread. I'm going to partake of it, and we're going to do this together in the spirit. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, I receive by faith all the benefits of the broken body of Jesus. I am healed I am restored. You are broken so that I could be whole. And I receive by faith all the benefits 
of the body of Christ into my life right now in Jesus' name. If you need healing and you're watching, I just want you to lay your hands on wherever you're hurting. I want the Holy Spirit to heal you this morning and touch you. If you're watching online, I have the blood here. It represents the blood of Jesus. And the benefits of his blood you can receive by faith today. So I want you to repeat this prayer to me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive all the benefits of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. His victory, his authority over death, hell, and the grave. Physically, spiritually, and in my soul, I live because of his blood. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Those of you online, we're going to sign off and we're going to minister to the body here in, in person. I love you. Merry Christmas. Join us for New Year's. God bless you.